Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Octoman and today we are taking a look into how to create a simple drawer or a simple point and click drawer or door open and close uh, scenario in Unity. So the first things first is you need a graphic where, uh, you, where you have a drawer as well as something like a cabin where this is going to be in too. First thing you want to do is if that you're going to have an atlas like this one, you want to auto slice that into multiple pieces. If you have them as a single piece, well, then use them as well. So we go to sprite mode, multiple and um, choose sprite editor and apply the changes. Once you do so, go to automatic slice and everything should be good to go. So you should have the drawer or actually the cabin and one of that and two of these. Depending on the graphic you are going to use, you may want to use the outline one, like where you have some shadow around here, or you just have a simple input one, which is basically sitting somewhere directly inside. Don't forget to apply the changes, and if you want to, you can also go and name that pieces as you please and like. Once you have done that, you have like four different pieces, or three, or depending how much you got. So we have an open state and two closed states, as well as the actual, yeah cabin for that. You have two possibilities to perform all of that. The first and easiest one is probably using a button or multiple buttons. So what you can do is first you want to implement an image. This image is going to sit anywhere in your canvas. Don't forget to make sure that your canvas is uh, using the scale with screen size. If you encounter any weird scenario where the image is going to be lost like mine, just delete it and right click and create a new UI image. So you got that in size. You can name this whatever you want and apply um, the actual simple drawer to it and go to preserve aspect ratio. So you're going to have always the same size. Once again, if you don't want to use that inside a canvas because there's something specific to it and you want to use sprites, this is also possible as well. So once you got this image done, you want to have some parts which are going to be them drawers. So we're going to create another image. What you can also do is you can directly create a button, but it's easier to use an image to set it up. So this image is now going to be any of my drawer. So you can rename this if you want to, just select it, hit F2 on the keyboard when you're using a uh, yeah, when, when you're using a PC. If you're using a Mac, probably right click and then rename this one. Or just go here in the bottom right, in my case where the inspector is, and put it down below. Um, or just rename it. So now pick all any of your closed states. For example, you can use this one, use preserve aspect ratio, scale it down until it fits the actual graphic you have provided or created beforehand. You can make it a bit bigger or smaller. That depends once again how big your thing or your graphic is going to be. So I still going to go and scale this one and try to fit it kind of what the size should be on that. Pretty good. That's basically it. If you want to use an inline one, I'm gonna, I can just go and duplicate this one and use one without the actual border around it. I can just put it anywhere so it directly fits inside the actual opening of my, um, you know, actual uh, cabin over here. So one or the other, both, is go both are going to work. For me, this one here probably is not a good one, so I just take whoops the dark one over there, so I delete the first one, just take this one, put it up here to be my first one, Control D to duplicate the second, second one if I want to. But before we're going to do this, let's set one up so we can see what's going to happen. So once again, I'm going to rename this one to be Drawer Closed. Once renamed, you're going to create another one, Control D, which is going to be Drawer Opened. Like that. This one needs another graphic, in my case, the open graphic. And as you now can see, this one is going to have a different size. This is because, well, the image size is going to be different. You can put this if you want to, and if you feel free, to, uh, yeah, if you, if you feel it, you're going to put this wherever it should be graphic-wise. So I try to fit it into my opening over here as best as I can just by scaling it around. You can also hit some numbers inside the inspector if that fits your needs. So once our drawer is open, once again, you don't have to bring it down here. You can even go and bring this a bit higher. 
like uh, we're gonna take the opened one and bring this a bit higher so it maybe looks not so much open but well who cares right you can also make the graphics so that you don't see the back side over here and you can cut it like in the center and anywhere so this is not visible however you please and like once again so once these two are set you're gonna be able to put that inside another game object. So this one image, once again, is going to be just the drawer itself or the actual cabin. Let me rename it so it's easier to see and understand. So what I want to have is an empty game object which holds the first and the second drawer. So this is just be D1, for example. An empty game object is more than enough than we need. And we make the other pieces, the drawer closed and the drawer open part of D1. If you want to, you can center them, but you can also keep them as they are. Why is that important? Because this D1 needs to be like a parent object, so it can literally hold some information if necessary, and we can simplify, just copy and paste, and re, let's say reposition this one, so we don't have to do all the setup all over the place. These two are just images, so we want to make them buttons. This is e easily done by just go to Add Component and add a button to it. That's it. Now, to open and close the drawers to have them selected or clickable, we're gonna be able to just select one of these, or literally both, and do always the opposite of what the drawer should do. So if that is a closed one, we wanna open it, and when it is opened, we wanna close it. How do we do that? Well, we just switch the images, basically, or the game object, like the holder over here, to be enabled and disabled. How do we do this? We are going to use the on-click system. So with the closed one selected, we need two um, on-click events over here in the on-click parameter. First one for ourselves, and second one for the other one, for the open one. What we want to do is we want to set the game objects to be active or inactive. What does it mean? If we are currently at the uh, at the opened one, as you can see, we are not having anything, but if we are at the closed one, we do that. So we want to disable the closed one and enable with the same functionality, like using game object, set active. We want to activate the open one and deactivate the closed one. Vice versa, we want to do the opposite to the opened one. So we add two functions, two on-click events to the closed one and to the open one. So the closed one is going to be game object set bool active. So we want to close it whenever it is opened. And we want to do the opposite to the open state. We want to close basically or disable the open state. What you can now also do is you can just say, okay, we want to start only with a closed state. So we deactivate this game object by just having this one grayed out over here. Now we could also go and duplicate these. Control D to bring it down. Put it wherever it should be, or kind of. You can rename it if you like to. And Control D once again. And now we have three to open scenarios. Let's try that out in play mode. When we now click one of them drawers, you're gonna see they're going to open or even to close. But you can see hierarchically they are wrongly um, appearing over there. This is because of the hierarchy over here it does not match 100%. To avoid or change that, we're gonna do the opposite right now. So we put this one at the very top, this one in between, and the top one needs to be at the bottom, so they are not intersecting into each other. If the images themselves on these buttons are going to be too big, because, well, as you can see, they are literally overriding everything, we can go and change the appearance. So, as you can see, this image here is just too huge in its complete size. So, that's why when we click on them, they're going to be too huge. So, what you can do is you can resize and reposition them as you need, please and like. If you're going to use prefabs, you can use one of them and just don't need to touch them at all anymore. Now, next one is going to be this one. We're going to optimize that by just reducing the size of the clickable area. So they're not intersecting into each other.
which is actually important. We're going to have to do this for the other things as well. So actually what the easiest part would be, we just um, yeah, optimize one and get rid of the others at least for a second. So if we now activate the drawer closed, we can do the same thing. We're going to bring the size so much up until it starts to scale down. Now we need to reposition that. And we are good to go. Now with that one open, we can once again go up and duplicate stuff. So first off, take the main object over here, bring it up, and disable the closed, uh, the open state. Control D to duplicate this one and bring this one down. So the second duplicated one, bring it wherever it should be. Once again, duplicate and go down. Once again, since the bottom one needs to be at the top, we can check this out pretty quick once again. The bottom one needs to be at the top hierarchically wise, this one. So they are not intersecting into each other visually. So again, I bring D3 up or the number three up. The second one is going to be in between and the first one in the top needs to be hierarchically at the bottom. Now we can open this and this and this and they're looking completely correct. And if you want to go uh, a bit closer to that and you want to keep aspect ratio over here, you want to go and bring your game screen further down here at first and see that your camera literally draws everything big enough. To do that, we can just increase the size of the cabin right now, since all the game objects which are related to them are going to fit the scale here as well. If you want to test this out once again, you can do directly in the game view, like so. Or you can go even and maximize on play. And see that the drawer are going to open and close on click. And you could put, can put stuff inside, make them things clickable as well. And so you have a good point and click drawer over here with enabling and disabling buttons. I hope you enjoyed this quickie and well, if, you're free, yeah, if you want to see more something like that, quick tutorials about simple content about point and click or something like that, feel free to yeah, tell me down below. Have a good one and thanks a lot for joining me on this little lesson. Bye-bye.